Hi, this is Colin Rennie here, and welcome to another video on Rhinoceros basic modeling. Uh, and in this one, I'm going to show you how to develop the slotting techniques that we started in the previous video. Uh, I'm going to move on to slotting um, flat um, intersections between um, 90 degree or perpendicular surfaces to, um, to, to surfaces with more angles in them. Um, and then, then just 90 degrees one to another so that can give you more flexibility to work with uh, with more sculptural objects uh, for the flat pack project that we're working on um, so what I'm going to do first um, because we're working with lots of different angles multiple angles I'm going to work um, in these solid tools with the cylinder um, and that will give us a chance to work more uh, with more angles and, and it just it seems appropriate to be working with cylindrical objects rather than with um, uh, rectilinear objects. I'm going to shade this viewport so you can see it. Um, I've done that without specifying the height there, so I'm actually going to specify the height there. I'm going to start with something that's that's not the right tool. I'm going to start with a cylinder. Um, I'm going to change, set the uh, the radius, but I'm going to not set the height. I'm going to set the height to four uh, millimeters. Press enter. It's going to give me a rectangle, uh, a circle cylinder with a height of four millimeters. This one I'm going to do with four again, and I'm going to do a small one here again. Four, enter. So I've got three objects there that each have a uh, four millimeter thickness to them. I'm going to take these, take this one here, and I'm going to rotate it. A copy equals no. I'm going to rotate this one here um, vertically. that one in there and push this one somewhere in there. Now I could slot these together as they are. Uh, I could center them up one relative to the other or I could do something slightly more interesting and I hope I'm going to do something slightly more interesting. So I'm going to rotate this guy here uh, around the center of this one to give it some more angle and I'm going to rotate these two here uh, around the center of this one. I'm also going to offset them slightly, offset this one to maybe offset this one as well to give them slightly more angles. Actually that won't work. That one needs to be 90 degrees. They need to be 90 degrees in one plane. So this plane here needs to be 90 degrees with this plane here. This plane here needs to be 90 degrees with this plane here. Uh, otherwise it won't work. So it won't slot. that will slot. okay. And you can have this at slightly different heights. So I can move this around. To say this position. And I can move this guy around to this position. And they remain 90 degrees. That remains 90 degrees to this. This remains 90 degrees to this. These are perpendicular from each other. Um, okay. So I'm going to put that over out there. Roughly in the middle. doesn't need to be precisely in the middle. Um, once I've done that, I can now start with the, the next section, which is to create the intersections between these two, but I need all of these duplicated first, because if you remember, to create an intersection, you destroy your input. So I'm going to uh, copy and paste, and then hide. So I now have instances underneath these, under the hide thing. So if I, if I bring the hide back, I have two instances here. If I take that one, that one and this one here and hide them. I, I only have one visible. Um, and that's what I'm going to work with. I'm also going to need two of the middle one here, control C, control V. Right, now I'm going to work in perspective here so you can see this a little bit more clearly. What I need to do is to create intersections between these surfaces, or these solids here, these poly surfaces here. So I'm going to use the intersection tool, Boolean intersection. This one in here is Boolean intersection. This one with this one that one there. And it's created an intersection here. It's kept this second one. It's, it's only one of these left. I remember I copied and pasted it. So I'm going to do the same thing with these two. So I'm going to do this and this. And now I have two intersectional parts, uh, which is what I want. I'm going to move one. Uh, actually, I'm not going to move one. Um, I'm going to move the parts once I've split them. Now you can see that they're not 90 degrees to each other. There's lots of, there's lots of curvature in here. I can't use a mid snap all the way around these because these lengths are all different. And if I used a mid snap, 
the, the, the cut across these objects would not be perpendicular. It would not be perpendicular to these four faces around the center. And I want a perpendicular cut all the way around through these. The reason for that is because the material that we're going to be cutting is cut on a water jet. It can be cut on a laser cutter. But the laser cutter and the water jet generally cuts vertically straight down. Um, and if you are not uh, cutting these things vertically straight down, they don't approximate the, the type of cut that you'll get from a water jet, so they won't accurately um, join up. So I need a perpendicular across these. Now, I showed you in class how to do that with a normal, normal across here and normal across here, and I said that there were easier ways of doing that. So I'm going to show you one of those easier ways rather than going through the normals again here. Now, the easiest way to do it is to use the perp snap here, which is perpendicular. Um, I'm going to use perp, I'm going to take int off, sen off, mid off, uh, actually I'm going to have mid for one, um, and I'll take end off. So I've got uh, near, mid, and perp on, and I'm going to split this object using those. And I'm going to draw a line around it, but before I do that I'm going to change it to ghost it so I can see through it, because I want to pick up points on the other side of these. Uh, use the polyline tool here, and I'm going to start on a mid. Let's take this one to start with, I'm going to put mid here. And I want to perp from that, perpendicular from that. So that's perpendicular from that original line there. So if I take a perp from that, it's a little bit like using a set square on a piece of wood. You're you're taking your um, set square all the way around the object. So there's my perp there, and there's my perp there. So I now have a plane through those, and I know that's a plane. I can tell that's a plane because for example, if I take that object and I use the tool to create a surface from that, it will create a surface from those. So I know that's a plane, therefore I know all of these are 90 degrees to this, um, or at least the points are planar, and I pick the points from this object using perp perpendicular um, snaps, so they are going to be perpendicular to all the faces of those. So that is 90 degrees. It's like cutting it off directly with a saw straight across the top with a, with a very well set up chop saw. Um, I'll delete that though because I don't need that particular surface. I need that one. So I'll do that once more uh, using this piece here. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see it more accurately. So I'm going to use the poly polyline tool and the I'm going to start with a mid and I'm going to choose and turn mid off because I don't actually want the mid uh, anymore. I just want perp. So there's perp, there's near, there's perp. I can take near off as well, I think. Only use perp perp and perp. Okay, so that's created another planar piece of uh, geometry and I can use these now to split these two objects. So if I use split here, it says select objects to split that object and this object and then select the cutting objects of this object and this object enter. That will cut these into two. Actually I want to do that one at a time. I'm trying to be clever there. So I'm going to split this object here, this object here, with this object here, and that's split that into two, and I'm going to split this object here with this object here. Okay, so that's split those into two. I'm also going to color those. I'm going to move those onto the red layer, change object layer. I'm going to move these guys onto the blue layer, change object layer. Now I've done that. I can bring back these two objects here, and there they are. Now what I'm going to do is to subtract one from the other using a boolean difference again. So we have boolean difference here, so you have to be careful thinking about which one you're going to subtract from. So this one is the one I want to keep, and I want to subtract the red one. I don't want to subtract this one, it'll make a hole in it. I don't want a hole, I want a slot. So that's a slot, and I want this one, I want to subtract this blue one here, this polysurface here, and this red one here. So that creates that shape, and then I want this one, that one, away. Oops, I'm going to do that. I want to do this. There we go. So that's now created my slotting geometry. Okay, so you can imagine now from this uh, that you're going to be able to, to create a number of angles from this. I could take a number of angles, coming, one coming off here, and I could continue to do this, and you can actually get these to come all the way back and join up. It's a little bit tricky, but you can get these, these, these kind of structures to come all the way back and join up to the original. They're not very strong though, so be careful. Um, the, the further you take these links one from another to another, they're, 
and the more stress you're going to put up, put on previous ones. You need to make networks of these to make them work. And I'm going to show you some networks of some waffle structures in a later video. But for now, we're going to leave it there. Um, in, a, in the next video, I'm going to start off from this point, and I'm going to show you how to you can use some array tools and some copy tools, and also some rotate tools. Or I'm going to use Rotate 3D to show you how to rotate these into different um, orientations and to create more complex geometry. So for now, we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.